All right, so welcome back to another video. So today's video, I'm gonna be replacing this water heater with this new one. All right, so when I first built my van, like many of you out there who may be considering putting an electric water heater in, I went with this Bosch unit. Uh, to be honest, I've only used it a couple of times and I already decided that I don't think it is right. And I see why people use it. It is inexpensive for what it is and it does work well. Uh, but the problem that I noticed right away is that since I will not be doing full-time camping in the van, uh, it's important that I drain the water heater pretty much every time I use it. Uh, especially in the winter when it gets cold, uh, you have to drain the water. And the only way to drain the water out of it is to completely take it out of the van and turn it over and dump it out. There is no drain plug on the water heater. So it wouldn't be so bad if I just had to do that in the winter, but there's long enough periods between when we use it, the camper, even in the warmer months, that the water would go stagnant and smell. And that's four gallons of water that is just going to sit there and stink. So I decided to go with this six-gallon marine-type unit. It's made by Kuma, I think that's how you say it, but it's actually Camco Manufacturing, which is a pretty popular marine and camper company. Like I said, it, it does hold a couple more gallons, six gallons. You can see that the size difference is not really that much. Uh, it's just a little bit deeper, but these are a little deceiving because it kind of sticks out in the back. So it's about three inches deeper, and it's... Already, the layout is going to work much better. I mounted it kind of up in that area over there. But I think that what's going to work really good about this one is how the connections are made all in the front. And like I said, it has a drain right here at the low point. So also, there's a couple different ways we can connect it. So not only does it have an electric element, just like this one. So if all you want to do is use the electric element in this, it would actually be a pretty easy swap. Just have to kind of do our plumbing a little bit different. Uh, this is the cold water inlet here. This is the hot water in outlet here instead of on the top like that one. Um, but this also has, uh, as you can see, these two ports here, which are for you to run coolant lines from the engine on the van, in my case, the ProMaster, and we can actually heat the water without using any electricity. All right, so I am going to go ahead and plumb it up to the engine coolant lines. It's not really that hard to run some heater hose under the van. We just have to make a loop, and we have to tie into the heater circuit for the van. And like I said, that will allow us to heat the water without any electricity. And if we are at a spot where we either have shore power or... A, we're not, we haven't been running the van and we want to use the batteries and the inverter, we can use the electric element inside. A couple more things for just, it's probably about, not quite double the price to get this one, but unlike this one, which is a glass lined steel tank uh, inside of here that will deteriorate and rust. People say these only last a couple of years. This one is made of all TIG welded aluminum and is not subject to corrosion like the steel tank. So it should last a lot longer and work a lot better. These are designed for, like I said, marine applications, boats, uh, but it's actually a perfect application here in the van. All right, so if you're just installing this straight off, um, you can kind of design where you want it back here. In my case, I'm kind of retrofitting where I already had some plumbing, like I said. And so there's my little shutoff valves. I'm going to kind of actually remove those, go with a little bit different setup. I won't need the braided lines anymore. I'm going to kind of hardwire the plumbing lines in to the front of the unit here. Again, I'll be maintaining PEX lines, with some adapters. So this is our... A uh, half inch male pipe or female pipe thread right here. And we'll put a male in here. And this is our cold where it's going to drop in, probably from around here. This is our hot outlet. Again, the orientation of these doesn't matter the in and the out. It's just a loop. 
this is where I'm going to run a uh, electric wire cord into here to plug right in where the other one was plugged in. And then we'll drill a hole down through the van floor. I'll run both coolant lines and then the outlet for the blow off valve through the floor of the van down underneath. And then we'll just route them to the front of the van. And when I get to that point, I will show you how we make that connection. All right, so basically these are the parts we're gonna need. Got a couple of T's that I might need under the van for the coolant hoses. Got a nice selection of stainless hose clamps. I've got two of these 5 8 uh, brass shutoff valves. These are going to be so you can shut the coolant off completely going to the back. So maybe uh, if you're not using the hot water heater in the winter and you just want all the heat to go to the heater, you could. So there'll be one on the return, one on the supply line. And this is how we're going to tee into the factory hoses. It's an adapter from three quarter inch to five eighths inch heater hose. I'll have links for all this stuff in the description. Then I have some high temperature th thread sealant. It's kind of what we're gonna uh, use to plumb the lines. It doesn't really have to be high temperature, but it just it'll withstand up to 400 degrees a little bit better. Then obviously we'll need heater hose. I went ahead and picked up 50 feet. This Gates heater hose, it was uh, branded as AC Delco, it's 5 8 so I got it a lot cheaper just because it was branded as AC Delco, but it says Gates right on it. This is what we're going to use to run the line, like I said, 50 feet, won't need quite all of it, depending on the length of the van that you're working on. Then you'll need whatever type of plumbing you're going to use, whether it's PEX or whatnot, whatever fittings you need to plumb it in. In your situation all right so i pretty much got it figured out where it's gonna go i've kind of got shoehorned in right there and it will drop down i just got it kind of propped up so i can work on the connections i'm gonna be drilling a hole in the floor kind of uh in the front of it i just gotta make sure i have clearance i'm probably gonna use a piece of two inch pvc to go through the flooring and that should give me enough room to get the multiple lines that i need to get through uh, there's going to be four total, the two coolant lines, a blow-off line, and also the drain line. I'm going to be using a different drain than the one that came with it. I uh, wasn't really crazy about that plastic, so I'm going to be using a more of a traditional ball valve, and there'll be a drain that goes to the floor. All right, so I've got this little frame. i fit under the, this side here. So next, I'm going to take this cover off and make the electrical connections to the cord. So for that, I just bought a like universal appliance cord. I made sure that it was the cable was 14 gauge, it's ready for 15 amps, so it's enough to handle the current that this will draw. All right, so I've got the wire hooked up. I'm just going to feed it under. Here. All right, so that should work pretty good. Nice and tucked out of the way. I'm gonna take a couple two and a half inch screws, run them down, Oop. bolt this to the floor, move that wood, and then down into the floor down there. Say that one is good enough in my case because this is jammed between this wall and that wall and is definitely not going anywhere. All right, next thing that I'm going to do is take a small drill bit, kind of see where we want our hole. Then I'm going to draw, drill a test hole with a small bit just to make sure there's no cross members in the way. So in the ProMaster, as you know, we've got a Cross member that runs over here, which makes it hard to put a center shower drain. So 
We should be okay right here because this is about where my shower drain is anyway in this area. All right, so as you can see, it came through in a good spot. So now I'm gonna drill a larger two and three eighths inch hole. Last second, I went down to the bottom and drilled up. Get the metal out. That fits just perfect. So what I'll do is I'll put a a union on the top of it, glue it to the top so it can't fall down any further than that. And then we'll silicone it in place. And then once I get everything done, use like a spray polyurethane foam or caulk, depending on how much room there is, so nothing come up through the hole. So I'm drilling another hole for the drain. Like I said, to get most of the way through from the top and then come down and finish at the bottom. Like that. Just make sure there's no sharp metal. Putting the paint on the metal. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. That's how it looks. Just got it glued together. Back in here. So that's how we go down the hole. So we're gonna up caulking it in place there all right so now it's just time to start plumbing first thing i'm going to work on is shut off valve here so i've got this ball valve here so to decide which way i want to put it i think it's gonna to have to go this way just to turn it on and off going anywhere all right so under the hood uh we're gonna start up here and then take a break back there and then start up here with the hoses run them under the van down the firewall and then back along the underside so these two hoses here are the ones we're going to be working on so we're basically going to cut one hose here cut one hose the other one there and this is where we'll put our T's. And then off the T, we'll go like this. And we will uh, have our shutoff valve right off of that. And then the hoses will run down to the bottom and back. It doesn't really matter which one's rich. Like I said, the return or the feed line. This right here is our air bleed. So you can see it's cool to start spilling out when I undo that. That's where we're going to let the air out of the system. Okay, so here's the 5 8 heater hose, 50 foot. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out straight and make uh, two 25 foot sections. And then I will basically start feeding it down. It's probably easier to feed it from the top down right here and then pull it towards the back. And I can pull it up through the floor back there.
All right, so I've started feeding it down the engine compartment and I'll pull it out underneath. I'm just gonna keep it as close to the firewall as I can. And we'll zip tie it wherever I need to. And I'll go underneath and take you along under there. All right, so I'm under the van. I'm pulling it down behind. That's where the wheel to go across. See, it goes right up through there. I'm gonna route it away from anything hot, like the exhaust. We're gonna bring it right down the driver's side of the fuel tank. Nice little, basically where all the brake lines and fuel lines run already. Then I also picked up some pipe insulation, self-stick kind, and I'm going to be wrapping that in some foil tape anywhere and it comes close to anything warm. There's a spot a little bit back by the muffler. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I've got all the line run. You can see here's what it looks like when it comes out underneath. So right here, what I did is I took some uh, stainless steel mesh and a hose clamp. This is our drain. So that mesh protects it. It keeps like mud daubers or any other bugs from clogging the outlet for the drain. And then this is the overflow, and then the two heater hoses. It comes down, same thing, there's a little bit of um, stainless mesh on the end of it there. That's obviously only going to have pressure if uh, there's a overpressuring of the tank, which hopefully that never happens. So these come out, there's a little bit of insulation and um, the metal tape where it crosses over the exhaust right here. It kind of runs around here, zip tied, zip tied to these brackets that hold the, the brake lines. There's where it goes up towards the front. Okay, so obviously up here towards the front more, um, where it gets kind of close to the exhaust, not really. Um, we've got insulation and a foil tape. Let's see that runs up past the fuel tank. You want to be careful, make sure there's nothing sharp. Uh, that's gonna rub through the hose. It's the main thing. It's under the hood. You can see where it comes up. You want to make sure it's nowhere near uh, the steering box or I should say axles or anything that's moving that turns. And that runs right up. Comes right up to here. And then we've got about this much coming up the front here. And about the same amount coming out the back. So I left that looped. Didn't cut it off right there. Because when I make my cuts, I'll have a little bit of hose left over for whatever. Okay, so all the connections are made in the back here. You can see you brought the hoses up. Again, it doesn't matter which one goes to which. Everything's connected. So we've got it to where everything's hooked up in the back. We've got our hoses up to the front. So I'm going to go ahead and lower the coolant level. I'm going to do that is I'm going to be using this vacuum pump right here. Works pretty good for stuff like this. I'm just going to be siphoning it out of the reservoir here. You can pull uh, one of the lower radiator hoses off if you want to drain the whole system. Or you can just not drain it at all. And just understand that when you cut these lines, some coolant's going to spill out. Won't be a whole bunch. Uh, nothing you can't just wash off the top of the engine. I'm just going to lower it a little bit. I kind of want to change some of the coolant anyway. I bought uh, two gallons of Mopar OEM coolant. Like I think it's purple now, purplish color. It is a oat coolant, O-A-T. So as long as you use another oat coolant, you'll be fine. Just make sure you don't use an H-O-A-T, a hoat, or uh, the glycol or whatever, the green stuff. Um, especially if it's... Your van's never been serviced before. You can use any coolant you want as long as you flush the whole system out, but if you want to keep it compatible, use oat. It's also a good time to check your uh, reservoir here. They're known to crack in places and get old. I'd imagine this one, just from the looks, it's been replaced since this is a 14. So obviously the point of what I'm doing here is I'm trying to just lower the coolant below the level where I'm going to make be making my cuts. 
Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'm using a pair of cutters. And I think I should be below that level, fluid wise. I'm just going to make my first cut. And these are three quarter lines. Yep, so no coolant came out because I cut it off far enough, so that's good. So I'm going to cut the second one in the exact same spot. Okay. Alright, so it's definitely easier to do this part of it before you get it all in there because there's going to be a lot of clamps. Just a little short area. You can see where someone else used uh, some heat shrink type clamps. That would work good in this application, but kind of hard to get. So this is going to obviously go into the factory three-quarter lines, and then that's where we come off to our five-eighths. Then right when we come off of there, we want to shut off. So we just need a little short piece of hose and a clamp and a clamp on each line for our shutoff valve. That's just so we can shut off coolant going to the back. In case there's ever a problem, you get a leak in that line or something like that, that's open, that's closed. We wanna be able to shut those off quick and easy like that. Okay, so kinda of hard to get in here and show you exactly what I'm got going on, but okay, it is done. Everything is hooked up. So this valve here, the one that's in the back, you can turn it towards the front to turn it off and then turn it this way to turn it on. And the one on the bottom, you push back to turn it off, and then like this to turn it on. You can see everything's hooked up pretty good. The only uh, kind of issue is you don't want the hoses to like bend off. So they kind of make a smooth transition like that. You can see it kind of comes around and goes down on both sides of this drain hose from up here. I'm going to put like one zip tie around everything just to kind of hold it in place. But now I'm ready to start refilling the coolant. I'm just going to fill it up slowly and then once it's full, I will, I'm going to leave the cap off the reservoir and I'm going to start the vehicle. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to start slowly moving coolant through the heater and back here. I'll leave this cracked till uh, the coolant starts to come out and then we'll run it down shut. And it may take a little bit to get all the air out of the system. I mean, that's quite a distance. Think about it round trip, at least 40 feet. All right, so this is the stuff we want, the 10 year. Uh, I got the pre-diluted, you can get the non pre diluted and just add distilled water if you want. I bought two gallons of it. I'm sure that'll be enough. Make sure your air bleeder is cracked while you're filling it. I'm just going to fill it up to the max line. Top it over this whole gallon here, which is above the max line, but it's going to start, as you can see, it's drinking it down. Sucked it all the way down there. All right, so I'm gonna go get another gallon, add more. I'm back up to the max line here. Now I'll go ahead and start it.
I got the bleeder open slightly. Some air and coolant coming out. I basically let it warm up all the way. The lines are, especially the, this is the feed line in the back here. This is the return line. They are warm now. You can see it's, all of a sudden the tank has started sucking down a little bit. You can see air is being burped out, so that's a good sign. Continue to let put a paper towel over your hands so you don't get burnt. Just let a little bit. Make sure there's no air trapped in the top part. Just set a paper towel under here. some air coming out. You can hear it. Can continue to make sure there's no leaks. All right, so it's probably been about 20 minutes of watching the coolant level. You can see there's still air burping. Every now and then I've just kind of let the cap loose, make sure you don't just pull it off real quick. All right, and then finally these hoses, for the longest time were not hot. Now they're so hot you can't even touch them. So that's a good sign. And it is safe to run coolant through there without having any water in the tank. Right, so this will be the last thing on the coolant part. After you're sure that all the air is purged out, what you want to do is go ahead and turn the van off. Once we got heat to the rear, turn the van off. Let it sit completely cool down. It'll burp more air once as it cools down. And then we can come back and do a final top off to set our level. All right, so now that everything's all done, the last thing I need to do is check it out and make sure it works. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test my plumbing for leaks. So how I can do that is I will go ahead and turn the shutoff valves into the tank off. Just put it in bypass for a minute because I do not want to fill up the tank yet. Now I'll go turn the water on. Okay, so I'm on a city water connection right now. All right, so it doesn't appear that there's any leaks with my new plumbing, so that's a good thing. At least not to the water heater. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna fill my tank, the uh, fresh water tank over here, and I'm gonna use it to fill the tank because I've got a, I'll have a mixture of uh, just a little bit of bleach in there. Go ahead and keep the lines clean instead of just using well water. All right, so I've got my fresh water tank filled up enough so I'm going to go ahead and switch my valves. This will start filling the hot water. I can hear the tank filling. As long as I have at least the six gallons I need, plus a little bit more. My fresh water tank is about half full. It should be plenty. I'll go ahead and let the air pour, purge out of the hot water line. The sink here. So step one is going to be that uh, the electric element works. I'm just going to turn it on for just a second. I don't, I'm not actually going to let it heat up because I really want to see how well the engine one works. So I've got the inverter on. Go ahead and flip on the hot water heater. All right, so you can see we're instantly pulling 116 amps, 1 1.5 kilowatts. This is with a load. 74% on the 2000 watt inverter. So that makes sense. It's pretty much in line with what they claim. 
All right, so we know the electric element works because as soon as I turn on the hot water heater, it's instantly pulling that kind of numbers. And I have my hot water heater on this time switch. The max it could go is 60 minutes, which is long enough, and that way it automatically shuts off, which is important if you're using a battery with inverter setup like I am. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off because I'm just gonna take it for a drive now, and that's gonna be the true test see how well the hot water heater works. So it's pretty neat to think that right now we're making hot water just doing the normal driving. The only thing I noticed was it took just a little bit longer to get up to normal operating temperature. And by a little bit, I mean just a couple minutes. Probably because it's, it's acting like a radiator, a hot water tank, especially with the cold water in it. All right, so let's wrap this up. So just went on about a 30 minute drive. I stopped for a few minutes in the middle and I'm back and I'm ready to check and see what we got going on with the water temperature now. All right, it is hot, very nice. So we've got hot water. I'll go ahead and check the temperature here. About 48 degrees in that pan. The water is about 106 degrees, 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Which is about 42 degrees. Celsius or 109 degrees Fahrenheit is what it got up to. All right, so very, very good. It's definitely warm enough. To... And we used no electricity to do it. All right, so I think that's going to be a, a wrap on this. Um, overall, the installation process wasn't that bad. Um, hardest part, obviously, is running the coolant lines under the van. But let's face it, if you are talented and skilled enough to do a van conversion yourself, this is no problem for you and you'll have no problem uh, installing this hot water heater. For the little bit extra you spend on this versus something like the Bosch or one of the many other uh, rebranded, uh, you know, small electric hot water heaters, it's a no-brainer to go this route in my opinion. It's a shame that I didn't do a little more research ahead of time and kind of went with what I saw a lot of other people going with. So I'll put a link to the hot water heater and all the stuff I used to put the system together in the links below. Uh, be sure to like the video if it helped you out. Be sure to subscribe for more ProMaster videos. And until next time, we'll see you later.